Maritime navigation has come a long way, from a glance at the stars to a push of a button. Christian, please take me to Malibu. But what happens when it's time for a sailor to earn his salt? From destinations beyond the horizon to transiting high traffic ports, there are basic standards to navigation, and knowing them can be the difference between the Bahamas and Cuba. So you want to circumnavigate the globe? Well, where do you start? How about at home in your own port? Here you'll find many navigation markers of all shapes and sizes, all within eyesight. These are called aids to navigation, and they make it easy to transit any harbor. When you're coming back in from open ocean, stick to your three R's, which is red, right, returning. By keeping these aids to your starboard side upon entry, you can make sure that you stay inside the federally marked channel. These aids should also be within line of sight of one another, and increase in value by even numbers the farther inland you go. The opposite goes for the green channel aids. When leaving a harbor, you will keep them on your starboard side and the numbers will be decreasing in odd numbers as you approach open water. Staying in between these two colors means that you are on the channel and should be navigating on safe, dredged water. You are grounded, mister! Now that we've cleared the harbor, we only have two more problems. Why can't I see my destination? And why won't all these boats get out of my way? Let's start with the first one, one that involves a Juan, a Juan Sebastian Elcano who was the first person to be credited to circumnavigate the globe with the help of Magellan's expedition. And while you're probably not all that concerned about 1500 spice trading right now, it was the first practical demonstration that the Earth was a sphere. So if you're at a height of eye six feet above the water's surface, you can only see 2.8 miles to the horizon. And if you can't see your destination, boy do we have a solution for you. Chart plotting is actually still a pretty simple and useful tool. That is if you don't have a cell phone to tell you what your heading should be. Now, most modern charts will give you the compass heading for popular routes. However, if you're going somewhere without one, you can always do it yourself with a parallel ruler. Take Nantucket to Monomoy Island, for example. We put our ruler between the two points, and then we can either slide the ruler across the chart to get our magnetic heading at a compass rose, or we can take our triangle and intersect it with a latitude line and get our chart heading that way. Now for that second thing, not getting crushed by a larger ship. Who's supposed to move out of the way? Well, there's a book on it, a book every boat should have, the International Regulations for Preventing Collisions at Sea, or commonly known as the coal regs. Now, if there's one word to take away from this video, it's the word preventing. Far too often, I hear stories of sailors squabbling over who was right and who was wrong. But the way the Coast Guard writes the book, if you're in a collision at all, you are in the wrong. That is why we don't use the term right of way. Instead, we use stand on, because there's no being right when you're in a collision. But we aren't in a collision, not yet at least. Instead, we're just steaming along Block Island Sound, making way at eight knots due north. Now we have a boat off our port side. If nothing's to be done, we could collide. Ah! Luckily, we have our trusty coal regs, which tell us that we're the stand on vessel. The other boat knows that, so they pass behind us. Now, what if we were passing by a different kind of vessel? Well. Here's a mnemonic for you. New reels catch fish, so purchase some. This is the order of priority for different types of vessels. First on the list are vessels that are not under command. These are vessels that could be adrift or have nobody piloting them. Next on the list are vessels that are restricted in their ability to maneuver. That could be because they're either towing or because they have some kind of damage. After that, we have constrained by drought or draft. These are vessels that are deemed too big for the narrow channels they are in. Then we have fishing boats. These aren't your typical fishing skips. These are large vessels that are operating commercially with equipment. Then we have sailing boats, which are confined to maneuver based off the wind direction. After that, you have power boats, which includes any boat motoring, which includes sailboats that are under motor as well. And lastly, you have seaplanes, which are deemed too fast for other boats to be able to maneuver around. Notice how the boats on this list that are more difficult to maneuver have higher priority over others. By recognizing a vessel's day shapes or navigation lights, you can determine their priority on the water. But if you don't remember it, or you didn't have time to read the coal regs, there's always cheat sheets available for you to help you out. Take this example. This time the boat passing on our port's a sailboat which has priority over us, so we become the giveaway vessel and pass behind it. But if that acronym slips your mind, remember, general responsibility overrules everything else. And let us not forget that tonnage matters. Mm.